The four personalities, a major key to making relationships work. That's the topic we're going to have here today on Relationship Thursday. How you doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, the author of the book, The Relationship Success Handbook, Get Rid of Your Problems, Not Your Partner. Now, this topic uh, came into being because I was actually having a conversation tonight with an individual and we were going over uh, how this relates in a relationship because they were talking about some of the challenges that they were having and they were admitting that they know that they are the person that's sabotaging the relationship because their partner is the perfect person. Now, how many of you have been in a relationship where you can actually admit that to yourself and go, my partner is they're, they're everything that I'm looking for, but I keep getting in the way and I will be the reason if we break up, it'll be because of my insecurities and the issues that I am personally bringing to the rest. Folks, that says a lot when you can step up and accept your role in a relationship. And that's again why my title of the book is called Get Rid of your problems. A lot of people misinterpret, think it's a marriage manual, and it's like, no, read it again. It says, get rid of your problems, not your partner. And your partner, as you guys know, I've said many times, your partner is every relationship you're in. You're a partner in that particular relationship. Um, um, a lot of people have taken that to think I'm talking couples, but no, every relationship you're in, you're a partner in that relationship. But anyway, let's get to these four personalities. And you guys will understand as I after I explain this, so bear with me as I share them. You'll see how they play in relationships and how you understand this. And this is what I shared with the person. And they got an aha moment because it's something I shared with them before in the past. But as I brought up the four personality, they're like, oh, oh my goodness. It just hit me that they're a T. And they're like, oh. And I said, again. I am guilty of it myself. I don't use it as much as I should. You should use it with everyone you come in contact with because folks, it's, and, and I'll explain why, but let's go through them. The way I learned it is uh, the acronym STAR, S-T-A-R. The S stands for stability. The T stands for theory. That's why I said the T personality. Once you understand the system, you start just using the letters. But the theory... The A is your action person, and the R is your relationship person. I learned this particular uh, way, and I enjoy it because just hearing the words, you almost pretty much understand the program just by saying those words. Um, example is when you say S, stability, you already know. You go, oh, I know who that person is. Right. They're the person that wants everything structured. Um, they're not going to rock the boat as far as changing things because they don't want to see change because that eliminates stability. You guys follow me? That kind of rocks the boat and they're not looking for that. Um, your theory person is your very, you know, your engineers and your astrologers and, you know, your real techie people. Um, very, sh they're very sharp, very sharp people. People you don't want to get in, in, in disagreements with as far as conversation because they're very, oh man, they'll make you look bad. Because they're very sharp. They know a lot of information. But because they're so far out there and they're thinking, they're usually thinking way out in the future and different things like that, they usually have very lousy people skills. Now, you guys will hear in a second why that's important. Um, and then you have your A personality, which is your action people. And they're the people that take action. They're the people that are looking for variety. They're the people that, you know, they can't sit still. They're the people that, oh, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to get into that conversation. But they're the ones that doctors keep misdiagnosing and keep wanting to give drugs and telling you there's something wrong with your kid because they're hyper. No, they're an A personality, and that's who they are. Quit buying this title and drugging your kids. <sighs> Breathe in, Ron. Breathe out. You can tell that that fires me up because I know back in my younger days, I would have been a person they would have labeled that, and I think it's an insult, and I think you're... But anyway, let's, let's move on. A personalities, your action people, and then you have your R, which is your relationship person. 
And we pretty much understand that. Those are your people that are really into, you know, they, they, a lot of them are the people that are in church. A lot of them are people that work in the medical field, the animal shelters, homeless. You know, they're, they're always, they're into helping. And that's their, their demeanor. They're just folks. If you understand the four personalities, then you come to a realization that we have all four as human beings. We have all four. But here's the catch, and it's a huge catch. We're usually strong in two of them. Not all four. We're strong in two. And guess what usually happens? The person we end up in a relationship with has the other two. That's why I'm covering this on Relationship Thursday, because if you get what I'm saying, it changes. Oh, man, it'll change the dynamics of your relationship. And this is why, again, this is coming up because when I talked to the person and we talked about that, they really came to understand, whoa, this is some of the, the challenge that they were having. And so, again, if you understand that, and this is why I don't get into the male roles, female roles, you guys won't have me hear me having those conversations. You may hear me say, based on the programming in this culture, they teach guys, this is how you're supposed to be, and they'll teach women how you be. We have no idea how men and women really would act if they weren't programmed. We don't. We have no clue. None. I don't care what scientists care. I don't care what. We have no clue. As human beings, the beautiful part about human beings, what makes us different than animals, is we have the ability to stop, pause, Think things through before we make decisions. Now, of course, a lot of us don't do it because animals live in a stimulus response world, which means things happen, they respond. That's just, they don't sit back and analyze and go, hmm, let me think this through. And, you know, hey, you guys got some information, some input on this and let's think. They don't do all that, okay? That's the ability we have as human beings. Unfortunately, again, a lot of us don't use it, but we have that ability. So that's what makes us different. So that's why I'm saying knowing that we have that ability that means if you left every human being to their own decision-making process without you having input as a society, nobody has any clue how men and women would turn out. It's just from the day people are born, they're given a blue blanket, a pink blanket, and the programming begins. It depends on the culture in which you live will be on the way that you see things. Because the reason, again, I don't have that conversation is because whenever I hear people say guys are a certain way, I go, huh. So that means I can go to Japan, I can go to Australia, I can go to Africa, I can go to Mexico, I can, you know, we can go on and on. I go to all those different places and all the guys think the same way that guys in America think. And they go, not even close. Interesting. They're all men. Why don't they think the same? Because culture is dictating how people are thinking. Um, I had a young lady share the same thing with me and she was saying, yeah, I'm a feminist. I go to all the marches and women kind of think the same. And, and I said, oh, so what you're saying is even though I just met you and this lady over here, I've known for 20 years, I already pretty much know you because of her. Is that accurate? She's like, no way. And I said, if women are the same, then I know you. See, folks, quit buying into that garbage, that thinking. The speakers that I've heard, and again, there could be some exceptions, but I personally have never heard a speaker on relationships that didn't say this is how guys are, this is how women are. But then at the same time, throughout their conversation, they're talking about how people are unique. Folks, you can't have it both ways. You can't tell me I'm a unique individual and then tell me, but I'm like all men. Then I'm not unique. That's why I was telling the young lady when we were having that conversation, I said, if guys are the same, why do you date? Just take one. Move on. They're all the same anyway. We all know that's not true. So why do we keep sharing this myth? Again, you guys know everything that I'm, I'm sharing. My objective is to simplify this thing we call in life because we're making this thing way, way more complicated than it should be. Um, I was just sharing that with a young lady and, let me get, and I'll get back on the subject. But we we're talking about because she was reading this book and it was talking about the subconscious, conscious mind. And, and you know, and I said... You know, and I listen to her and let her share, but I always laugh when people have the subconscious conscious and we get into the, you know, um, the sales and all of that. Folks, this, this, let's quit making all this stuff complicated. Whatever you're focused on at this moment is conscious, right? 
It's that simple. If you're watching this video and you're listening to what I'm saying, this is consciously where you're at at this moment. That's your conscious mind. Everything else is subconscious. Why? Because you're not thinking about nothing else. It's the same thing with focus. Whatever you're focused on, that's conscious. Whatever you're not focused on, it's subconscious. It's back in the back there somewhere. Folks, we keep making this stuff way, way. We want to get into the science and, and make the, it's not complicated and let's quit trying to make it sound that way so that people feel like, whoa, I need a genius like you to, to clarify this stuff for me because there's no way I would really, folks, this, this is not mad science. It's, it's not. Conscious, hopefully you're conscious right now and you are focused on the video and you're taking in the information that I'm sharing and hopefully everything else right now is in the subconscious, which means you're not thinking about what you got to go do for, for lunch and all that, I mean, for dinner or whatever, because now that's becoming part of your conscious mind. We don't, let's, let's, let's try to get one focus consciously on this topic we're having here about the four personality. Let me get back to that focus. <laughs> but anyway, so if you understand the four personalities, then you understand that, again, you're strong in two, and the person you're usually going to be in a relationship is strong in the other two. Again, that's why I don't play the male-female role, because sometimes, like we talked, I was sharing with a friend about the T personality and how they're very sharp, they're very, you know, and but they usually have lousy people skills. And, you know, I was sharing a couple of things and she's like, oh, my goodness, you have no idea what you just did. And I'm like, huh? She's like, all these years I have believed my mom, you know, because I believe that there's certain women that shouldn't have kids. And my mom fit that that thought process. She says, but the way you just explained, now I understand my mom. Now it makes sense why she was the way she was. Folks, this is not to give an excuse for people. This is not to judge people. This is to understand. You guys hear me all the time saying there's two keys to relation. One is accepting people as they are, which I call love, and two is communication. If I understand you, that wipes out a lot of the confusion that we have in relationship problems because I'm coming to you understanding we're not gonna see the world, especially if I understand these personalities, then I understand everybody, I don't know which one of the four you are as far as which one is your strongest. Until I have a conversation with you, then I can kind of sense like, okay, they're either the S, stability-minded, they're the T, which is the theory, or they're the A, which is the action, or they're the R, which is the relationship. And then I get to say, oh, now I know how to talk with them based on that. And real quick, an analogy um, that I use for, for, that I used to use for my business to understand when I was recruiting in the financial service industry, you needed to know, and this was real good information because you needed to know who you were talking to. Because if I'm talking to a stability-minded person, I can't talk to them about coming to the financial field, making income, maybe get to the point where they can make six-figure income and all that kind of stuff and sell that and tell them and say, and fire your boss. You guys hear what I said? Fire your boss. And I said, I'm talking to who? A stability-minded person. Do you guys understand why I just turned them off? Why I just lost them? They're a stability-minded person. They're not in the change. They're not going to jeopardize what pays their bills. Does that make sense? So they're not going to sit there. So you're going to lose them and blame them and go, see, people just stupid. And I can't believe they talking about they broke and they talking about this. They ain't doing nothing about it. See, that's why I don't get into the labels, folks. We got to understand. You got to get better at communicating, talking to people and being able to speak their language. And the disability-minded person, their language is, you can't make me do anything that's going to jeopardize what I have. So if you come to that same person, you talk to them about the ability to maybe earn additional income without jeopardy. No, because we know this pays you. See, I'm feeding into that because I know what they're looking Because we don't want you to do anything that's going to jeopardize your job, cause you to look. We don't want to play with that. See, they go, yeah. See, you're speaking that language, right? I'm not doing anything to jeopardize their job. But we have the ability to earn additional income where they're like, yeah, because I need some more money. You see, you can talk to them that way. The theory personality. They're a person that's into information. Very sharp. See, you can recruit them through the fact that you got some information that they can acquire to add to their bank 
of knowledge. And if you can give them some information that they know that they could go out now and they could talk about mutual funds and they could talk about, you know, how money works and they stuff they didn't know. Give me the information, more knowledge to be able to show again how smart I am. But again, those people usually have very bad people skills, very sharp individuals. And again, why I keep saying that so you guys get it is because if you understand the personality, you understand who they're going to attract. Make sense? And we'll cover that here in a second after I cover the last two. But your, your A personality is a person, they variety. They're the people that have had 10 jobs. They're the people that are your entrepreneurs. Uh, they're the people that think they're the boss, are the boss. Um, they can't stay in a company too long because as soon as you tell them what to do, they're going to tell you where to stick it. Um, they just, they're just a different breed of people. They're the ones that I was almost went off and, and said the doctor's going to label and, and say something's wrong. They're the people that they create stuff. That's them. They're working on a project over here and you turn your back and look and they all went to the other side and they on another project. You just go, oh my goodness. How did you get over there? You, you didn't even finish. That's them. They start stuff. They will not finish anything. Good. Now I know who I'm dealing with. See, folks, again, understanding these four personalities is not to judge people. It's to understand them and then use their strength to your ability. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the strength to make this team work and so we can get the best out of each other. And then you have the R, which is the relationship, which is pretty straightforward. They're, they're the people that's really good, great people skills, love everybody. So if you guys understand what I just said, guess who the R personality is going to marry? The T personality. Remember, that's why I kept stressing that about the T. You they have very bad people skills. They marry the R. Why? The R is the only person going to put up with them. The relationship person that looks for the good in everybody is the only person that's going to put up with that personality. Everybody else is going to tell them where to stick it. You guys follow me? So if you understand what I just said, now you start to understand why you end up with conflicts in relationships and how you can fine tune those if you really get to know this, because now you got, you start to know who you're dealing with. Um, so if your stability and what I've noticed normally, um, I don't know why it works this way, but normally the person that's the stability minded, they're either the S is their first. Remember I said, you, you know, you have all four, but you're usually strong in two. But usually if their S is strong, which means they're stability minded, their second is R, which is they're also relationship people. And what I found out is just the opposite. If you have a person that's a relationship person, usually their second trait is the stability. And then you have the T personality, who is usually their second trait is the A, the action. Or it flips around and you have the, the A, who's the action person, and their second is the T. I don't know why it normally works that way, but it does. I mean, it could work anyway, but I'm just saying, what I've noticed, though, normally, that's just the way it works. And the way you find out is their R stronger or their S stronger is you can find out if you go to their house, they will answer it for you real quick or look in their car. And R, it looks like people don't live in there. In other words, it might be kind of junky. Their justification will be people live here. We're human beings. That's their justification. S is sparkle. Looks like a, a, a museum. Uh, you look in their cabinets. All the cans are lined up in alphabetical order or they're, or they're by height. They're totally organized. You'll know instantly which is stronger. And normally, once you figure that out, the one that you know, you automatically know who their partner is. Remember what I just said. We're strong in two, and our partner's usually strong in the other two. So a lot of time when you meet a person, you figure out quickly, they're an S, stability-minded. That means they're married to someone who's an A, T. You guys follow that? Who is the action person, theory person. So now if you ask them, what is your husband, you know, like an engineer or something like that, they just go, wait, you know, my, you're trying to be funny. No, because that's usually who they're going to marry. Now, folks, there's exceptions to all rules. But I've seen it more consistent almost every time. And that's why when I was sharing this with this person tonight when we had the conversation, they were instantly like, oh, my goodness. They said, 
they're a T. They said, oh, it never hit me. And I said, we talked about this ages ago. And they're like, oh my God. And it was an aha because then it made sense what was going on in their relationship because they are like, they they instantly start saying, yeah, you know, because when it comes to finances, they already understand, get out the way, let me run this. And, you know, and that's why, again, why, why I was sharing this is because once you understand kind of what she was getting to is she she's running the finances is because when you understand the personalities, you don't get into, which again, like I said, I don't get into the male, female, he's the man of the house, he's the breadwinner, he's all these myths that we keep passing on for generations that don't work, never have worked. Uh, we'll find the exceptions to the rule and then we want to make that as a general rule. Folks, this is this is not the way it works. This is, for me, when you want to say the man of the house, the only time that's true to me, whatever, whatever your version of man of the house is, if the family is being threatened from a physical or a mental attack, you better step your butt up in front and say, you got to kill me and go through me before you get to my family. That, to me, is the only role I see when we talk this male, female, I'm the man of the house, after we get past that one, now it's who is best suited for whatever challenge crosses our relationship. Because if you understand, again, the four personalities and you understand that you're strong in two, your partner's strong in the other two, then whoever's the strongest is the person that who needs to be in front when we're on a particular subject. If you get caught in this ego thing that he's the man, and we're talking about like we were talking about in their case, he's the man. He's the breadwinner. He, he runs the finances. But he has no knowledge of money. That is irresponsible for you guys to sit there and let him cover the finances. You better get the finances out of his hands quickly. Again, this is who is better equipped. If the wife is the one that has the money knowledge, she's the one that needs to be making the money decisions. And you need to be back there, <laughs> cheer her on and say, okay, honey. Now that's not saying sit back there and don't do nothing and just give it, because you shouldn't do that on any role. We complement each other. It helps us become stronger, but especially a subject like finances. The reason I'm saying you better learn it and understand it is because if something happens to your partner, now you're in control of it. See folks, when something's going to be by default, come to you, you better be make sure you're learning, not just saying, okay, honey, it's your strength. You go take it, and I'm going to go do something else. No, they're better equipped, so they should be the leader on this particular topic. But you still need to be gaining the knowledge. That's why their strength will help you become stronger in that area. But you don't need to make that your strength because it's theirs. But you do need to get stronger in that area. Does that make sense? And that way, if something does happen, I can take over the finances and keep going. Not if something happens to her, I'm going... Um, I don't know where our statements are. Um, I don't know who our insurance company is. I don't, I don't know nothing. She has folks. That's not good either way. I don't care if you want to cut in the mail thing. And unfortunately, a lot of guys that I hear that play that I'm the man of the house stuff. She doesn't know anything. So if something happens to him, she don't even know where nothing is. Folks, that's not good for, that's not even a relationship in my eyes. It's called relating. You need to be relating to each other. That's why it's a relationship. They should be knowing everything that's going on. Why? Don't you want your partner equipped? Don't you want your partner in a situation that if something happens to you, they can keep moving? I remember uh, when I was in the financial field, we were talking about... Uh, one of the ladies that wanted to visit was funny because she said, yeah, you get these men out here, got these little egos, and, and they be talking about, I don't want to leave no life because I was in the financial service field, but it was like, I don't want to uh, leave all this life insurance, you know, for my wife. And she said, fellas, you can't be dead end jealous. And I die laughing. And I said, because it's true. Folks, you need to be equipped in your partner. What, because you're afraid they might leave? then you're with the wrong partner to begin with. I'm equipping them because it makes the team stronger because we're going to be victorious together. We're going to win together. We're going to fall together. Either way, we're going to do this together. 
but it helps when we're working together as a unit, taking each other's strengths to make us strong. If we understand this and take, I take my two strengths, you take your two strengths. We got all four personalities covered and we strong. We become a strong unit. That's when relationships work. Not when you get caught in your ego and your pride and you start, I'm the man, or you start to believe, well, he's the man. Folk, and again, folk, you guys know what I share. I'm giving my perspectives. If you believe he's a man, he should call all the shots, run with that. As a man, if you believe I should call all the shots and you find a woman that's willing to go for that, run with it. I'm just telling you, for me, my experience, if you want a relationship to function at its best and everybody feeling fulfilled is when everyone is playing to their strength and encouraging their partner where they're not strong. And then in the one that, you know, when they are putting their strength up there, you're encouraging them because they're pushing the team further. And folks, we, man, if you understand this, anytime I was in management, um, in every company that I worked in. And because T is my second, you know, my uh, technical side is my second. My A is my first. That's why I do videos and stuff like that because we, we're in everything. <laughs> That's why I'm doing all these different projects. In case I didn't mention it, I got a, a, a store I just opened, you know, online store that I just opened about a, a month and a half ago. You guys, go check that out. It's uh, close to inspire dot com close to inspire dot com to spell t o close to inspire dot com and it's as a matter of fact I got on one right now I'm just thinking about that why well, I don't know if you guys can see it hopefully you can see it because I can't look in the camera but it says I am enough it's one of the shirts wow hey did a plug let's make it happen but anyway <laughs> that's that's but that's kind of some of the stuff that 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 I'm going out here and making happen but anyway what I was getting to is that's the A personality. We're into everything. I got that going on. I got the podcast going on. Got my YouTube channel going on. I'm just in there. That's what we do. But we don't get stuff complete because we do have our hands in everything. So we need the stability-minded person in our life to get stuff done. To say, time out, slow down. Let's get this one working first. After this one is working, then we can move on, add to the current project, or add on another project, but after this one is stable. You guys follow me? That's why I say relationships work if you because then you start to take on your part. So if I know that I'm that type of person, I know I'll go get some stuff started. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go out here and make some stuff happen. And trust me, I'm gonna have 10 projects going on. I got so many projects going on right now. That's that's why I told you guys, you guys have probably heard me say that why I hadn't dated to this point, and I'm getting back out there here real soon. But um, cause I look forward to getting out there and driving somebody crazy. But, uh, anyway, um, was I getting ready? So what I was getting to is, is really with the personalities. If you understand that then we work together because I'm being the action. I need that stability minded person. So it'd be great if I had that person in my life right now, because, <laughs> because actually I would probably free up time and be able, you know, like I said, my dating issue is, is an issue right now. Because I don't have no time. The reason I don't have no time is because I got 10 projects going on because I had no stability in my life. If I had some stability in my life, i probably have some free time. Ain't no probably. I would have some more free time. So it's kind of like, you know, the as people call it the catch-22, but whatever. But that's kind of where I'm at. And so right now, I'm trying to make myself be stability, which is rough when I keep jumping to different projects. But that's why you attract the stability-minded person because now while I'm jumping to different stuff they can make sure one project gets complete while I'm over here doing something else because if you're waiting on me to get it done I probably get close to where I get nine tenths of the way where I'm ready to push the button and be finished with the project and guess what I do start a whole new project and it's like you were at the finish line what were you doing and it's like I know I know let me run over here Take care of this real quick. I'll be back. You need that. Again, that stability says, no, we're going to cross the finish line, get this one done, and then you can run over there. And so, but anyway, that's why I said knowing the personalities that I understand that's what I need in my life. And so then 
it, it, and so then you don't fight your partner. And again, that's why I was saying the conversation. That's why we got here tonight on this four personalities understanding instead of use it, looking at that as a uh, ego a pride, uh, I'm the man or any of that kind of stuff. Just say, I know your strengths. You know my strengths. Let's use those. And again, learning these four personalities. And again, the way I, I that's why I use that acronym STAR because you guys probably pretty much understand it without even going into real deep detail. Um, I do talk about it in my book, um, but you probably understand it. Uh, you know, at least got a grasp to where it makes you sit back and go, man, I need to think this through before I start just judging people and say where they fall. And then I know how to how to talk to them. Because remember, I talked about the stability-minded person. I can't talk to them about leaving their job. The A person, I can. Remember, that's the person I had 10 jobs. They're getting fired every place, and they're telling people law because they the boss. They the... Them, I can say, man, when you want to be in a position, I know you don't want people calling the shots in your life and telling you when you can go to the bathroom, when you can take vacations. They're like, yeah. They cheering you on like, yeah. I'm ready. Man, I almost quit yesterday. See, I can have that conversation with an A personality. It's right up their line. That's speaking people's language. Folks, learn the four personalities. Again, people teach it different ways. I've seen people teach it um, through animals. They'll teach you the four different animals. I've seen people do colors. Um, I just happen to like the way I learned it, which was through the STAR acronym. Because again, the words, if you remember the acronym STAR, Remember what each one, stability, T for theory, A for action, R for relationship. You got a good grasp on what those people are all about. And just understand, again, you strong in two, your partner's usually strong in the other two. Use that to your strength. Do that in all of your relationships. You'll watch all your relationships turn around because it won't be a thing that I'm the man, you're the woman, this is your role, this is my role, this is how we... No, this is about whose strength do we need based on the situation that's in front of us at the moment? Let's use that strength and let's run with it. So as you guys know, it ain't right. It ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now, for those of you who uh, I talked to on uh, Relationship Thursday, I look forward to seeing you next Thursday. And for those of you who were looking for to, to get that confidence and, you know, make sure we love that person we see in the mirror every day. I'll see you on Self Love Monday. But whatever you guys are doing, make sure you're out here. If you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. All right, I look forward to talking to you guys soon. Enjoy the journey. Your uplifting life partner, Ron Myers, signing out. Simplified Myers. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye.